Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Jake, and you're listening to Neverland, Neverland Navigation, Navigation Radio, Radio, where we go wild and talk about all of our favorite and least favorite things at Disney's fourth theme park, <laughs> Animal <laughs> Kingdom. You were going to say newest, right? I was going to say newest. It is technically the newest. It just feels weird. 1998. Yeah. That's a long <laughs> time ago. That's not yesterday. That's not yesterday. That's a long time ago. Yeah, maybe we'll get a fifth park Ooh, at some point. Hey, Universal Studios is opening rumors. their second, their third, <laughs> third yeah. their third gate. That's why I've heard rumors because, Epic you know, universe. people think that to compete, Disney might want to do a fifth park. I mean, it does, it does kind of make sense. We'll see if they, I, I would be curious to know what type of concept they would consider. For a fifth park. Villains, don't you think? I think that's yeah. the one I always hear the most talked about at D23. They mentioned a villain's land. Yeah, beyond so Thunder Mountain. So they're considering it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So they're considering it as a possibility. They have been talking about it for like almost the whole 50 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It gets brought up and then taken it, away. And it, is, and it is a little hard to imagine that they wouldn't dedicate a theme park to an entire movie franchise or something i almost thought that's what they were going to do for star wars because if they, oh. they were a franchise that made the most sense to be a whole theme park i feel like star wars right has enough diversity in settings and enough different things going on yeah. that it would kind of make sense but now that they didn't do that i i kind of wonder can anything be its own whole theme park you don't think a villains one would work i do i also think a Pixar theme could work, although then I feel like they would, the Toy Story thing would be a little weird, which is funny because with the hotels, this is like way kind of off. But so All Star Movies was made and they had a Toy Story section of All Star Movies. Right. And then when Art of Animation was, I don't know, it, it's like almost confusing. Yeah, there are multiple, multiple different hotels that have the same or maybe that's not it maybe it's that they put toy story in uh, never mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do that i see what you mean though that if they do open a new park it's like well what do, what do they include that's already in the other parks versus what's not like for example universal studios they have harry potter at universal and at islands of adventure and there's going to be a harry potter section of this new park oh okay. or a fantastic beast and where to find them yeah. which is a spinoff of harry potter right so like they've got harry potter in every single park well i was just thinking pixar is big enough for them to you know yeah do it. that's and, and a good point toy story is the only thing that really could kind of mess that up for them but anyway not that we're talking about that at all today that's not what we're talking about we're talking about disney's newest theme park. <gasps> of course the shiny Animal, Animal Kingdom. Kingdom. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Full, should we full disclosure to the audience? You guys, we were recording 40 minutes of this exact um, podcast that you're listening well, to. Well, we were talking about completely different things because that's how we do. Yeah, we actually weren't even talking about the list <laughs> that's associated with this podcast. We were instead talking about different um, topics. And then we had an audio problem. We had to restart the entire episode. But guess what? That's showbiz, baby. Yeah. And sometimes... We're that, only human. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know. That kind of sets the, the seed for where we are <laughs> <Does it? laughs> now. Now we have to overcome all of the odds and record the best podcast we've ever recorded. Yeah. You know? That's what that's what has to be done. Yeah. No pressure. No, no pressure. <laughs> but um, we don't actually get to talking about Animal Kingdom quite as much as the other parks. So I actually really enjoy taking some time to talk about. I do too. I think that Animal, Animal. Kingdom is... Um... I don't know. I think I think. Do you it's, find it to be underrated? Yes, because I think it's everybody's least favorite. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying that that it probably if you forced me to rank the parks, which, which I you, did, I've done. Yes. For our test episode, I was like, "All right, Morgan, if you think you can do this, let's do this." And we ranked we ranked the four theme parks. Maybe one day when we start our Patreon <laughs> for like an anniversary or something, that that will come out. But. Ranking the parks is like. Choosing Impossible. your favorite child. 
I, it's not right. I don't feel good about it. I it love, changes from day to day. You know what I mean? I try not to because I love them all for very different reasons. Yeah. It's much more fun to think about them as individual experiences than to compare them to one another. There really is. It's just not. It's You just can't. They're and different. It doesn't, They're just totally different. It doesn't matter as well because I really do recommend that you spend a full day at each park. I do too. There is no park that I think is a half day park. I don't, I don't think there's a skippable park. Yeah. Yes. Um, however, if there was going to be one, it'd be this one. So okay. <laughs> it's, it's joking. No, no, you're. That's why I think. But you're right. Well, in that if you had to skip one, this is the one I would say to skip to. Yeah. But it's because of the um, amount of rides at this moment. Right. So in a with if we're just talking about statistics, Animal Kingdom is the biggest park of the four parks land wise. But it also has the least amount of rides and attractions. Which sounds confusing, but it's because of the safari. Yeah. The safari takes up like half the park. Yeah. And it's one ride. You can fit all of Magic Kingdom in the safari area. Right. right? It's yeah. it's a huge, extremely impressive... And that's Kilimanjaro Safari, if you haven't been on it. That's... Feet of conservation or yeah. whatever. And that's what it mostly is, is it's a place for the animals. Right. So And, and then also you can take the ride and ride through and see them. Yeah, not that it's an accident. They did build the park around the safari, but like it, it's true that in reality, the, pri the primary function of that land is, you know, being an animal conservation, which is, you know, pretty impressive for Disney standards, but only makes sense if they were going to do an animal park. You have to have, you know, the conservation elements of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the safari is... Um, I would say most people don't think about the safari like that. They don't think about it as the main, as the headlining Animal Kingdom attraction, which is wild because when Animal Kingdom opened, the safari was the thing to do. Oh, yeah. And, and it still generates a pretty hefty wait time, although I don't know if that's as much to do with the fact that it's wildly popular, no pun intended, as also it's not a constantly moving ride. Right. Um, they load a truck. They send the truck off. They load another truck where, like, something like Haunted Mansion, where that thing doesn't even stop to let you on. Omni mover. Yeah, you're, yeah. You have to walk and get on while it's moving. That's a continuously moving ride, and they can accommodate more people. Do you know what it's almost like? When Disney's MGM Studios, Disney MGM Studios opened, mm. a huge portion of the park was the tram tour. Yeah, the, the back lot tour. That the, 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 the back lot tour was like this over hour long it since has been super cut well now it doesn't now exist yeah, but, super cut. <laughs> but anyway it used to like go on the streets of america yeah. it had a really long kind of tour um and that was the the top build yes hollywood studio and that mgm was, like, attraction because the number it, one thing to do there. yeah that's how the safari was at animal kingdom right. for the longest time probably until they like branched off in the 2000s and developed Expedition Everest, right. the Asia version, the Asia portion of the park. And then again, when they revitalized the park with Pandora, right. then that really shook up the identity of Animal Kingdom. But for a long time, it was this like safari attraction and all of these animal exhibits. And then Dinosaur was like the really thrilling. Dinosaur was also the weird, like oh, yeah. thematically yes. very weird. Although... From concept, it was also supposed to have, like, a beast area, huh? Right. That was a huge part of the package of Animal Kingdom. If Beastly Kingdom, which right. was the planned um, mythical animal land of right. Animal Kingdom, if that had opened with the park as initially planned, I really think we'd all be thinking about Animal Kingdom very differently. How so? I, I don't think it would have the reputation it gained as a half day park because yeah. there was meant to be an e ticket roller coaster attraction in there. Right. There was meant to be these really immersive experiences and the Disney wonder that you typically associate with Disney theme parks, this mythical, larger than life element um, that a lot of people, I think, think is missing from Animal Kingdom. That would have been in Beastly Kingdom. And they were so far down the path to Ugh. creating it that they, they have this dragon on some of the signs that you see today. Right. Which and, is crazy. And if you follow our TikTok account at um, Neverland Navco mm -hmm. on um, TikTok, 
then you can see we did a TikTok there documenting the history of the Discovery Riverboats, which were this attraction in um, the early days of Animal Kingdom that was almost meant to be like a preview river cruise for Beastly Kingdom. Like it had this whole plot line about you know, this dragon in this cave that right. better be careful because it'll roast the visitors and all of that. All of that was to promote what would be Beastly Kingdom. So even when the park had opened, it was like this this thing that everyone was looking forward to as an opening to replace yes. the very boring Camp Mini Mickey, which was always supposed to be temporary um, and was basically nothing, just a home for the Festival of the Lion King mm-hmm. in its original building before it moved to Africa. And um, a place for a small show, Pocahontas and her forest friends, which was right. basically nothing. So, like, you know, it was this collection of weird stuff um, that everyone was really excited for Beastly Kingdom to kind of take the place of and be the headlining portion of Animal Kingdom. And it never happened. Right. So, like, the identity of Animal Kingdom has always been weird because yes. it was never what it was meant to be. Right. So then it opens and it's almost entirely animals except for this little dinosaur area <laughs> right. it, it just and, and dinosaur and, yes and dinosaurs and, are animals but like it's different right. it's a different feeling it's well okay i'm gonna go ahead and say that the rest of it was a little bit like an elevated zoo right if you remember not a zoo yeah the ads were not a zoo right um we should see if we can find some t-shirts or something <laughs> yeah because like how many people it's like an inside joke at this point it is but also what great advertising that like this is still the first thing like one of the first things i think of when i think of animal kingdom is not a zoo it's catchy it's, it's poppy catchy. It's, so, yeah. but but so the majority of the park is a zoo, a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> despite their best efforts yeah. it's despite still a zoo. a zoo and yeah. then there's the dinosaur area right. which which is also themed to be like a carnival and a museum well, just the ride. Yeah. The the, the rest of it is like and they're supposed side by to side. be a carnival. Yeah. So to me, that okay, should thematically we talk, is a little weird. Should we talk about it? The backstory of Dido Land USA has been wild. And yes. I feel like now is an appropriate time to oh talk about gosh, it. Oh my gosh, for sure. Because who knows if it's ever going to, you know, if it's going to be around for much longer. From, yeah, D23 made it sound like that it would not be around much longer. It's going to become a Moana Zootopia. Mashup. <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. Wild. Um, we don't know but um D- dino land usa the premise of it is that the dinosaur attraction is hosted in this building called the dino institute which yes. is kind of like this museum and research center for paleontology right wonderful well yes it's it's kind of like a, any natural history right. museum that bill nye is, is there yes yeah, bill nye in is the there. sky of course he is. yeah okay so that's there and then in the parking lot sprouts up this traveling circus carnival Uh type situation that was meant to capitalize on the touristy buzz around the Dino Institute. Um, And this venture by Chester and Hester to bring their carnival amusements um, kind of led to all of the games and the rickety primeval world roller coaster and Mm. all of that. And that's why there's such a clear divide between the established, you know, cleaned up dinosaur, dino institute side of things, and then the yes, I mean hillbilly. Uh, yeah, at least it has a story. Parking lot. Yeah, but they don't really tell you that story when you're walking in. And when I was a kid, I was like, "Why are we in the parking lot?" Yeah, it's, you know what I mean. Yes, yes. It, it felt very strange to have the county fair right at Walt Disney World. I, I love that they'll have these intricate backstories, but it's weird that you never really have them explained to you unless you deep dive or you listen to podcasts like yeah. this or whatever. You just have to accept it, and you, you just, just okay. You're just kind of just like, oh yeah, we're in the hillbilly part now. Yeah, you know, it's because it's <laughs> never really what like okay. I say hillbilly. No one. It's like these deep. Everyone speaks in these deep southern accents because that's the whole gag that's the whole point of it but like the backstory is never laid out like you're saying yeah so if it doesn't if it doesn't connect if it doesn't explain itself it might as well not even be there you right, know what i mean right. to some degree if you can't figure if it's not something that you could figure out which i don't find that one to be something no that I would it doesn't translate together, it doesn't translate yeah, yeah on my own then either you've got to i feel like you've got to 
either not have it or or have it explained when you're I don't know where. I don't know how they would explain Yeah, it. and like us Disney fans who know what's up, yeah. like the 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 hardcore Google searchers that we are and people who were there for the histories of a lot of these things, it it, it is interesting to us and we'll understand it. But for the average passerby, I don't it just doesn't look like a high quality experience. You know what I mean? It just yeah. looks cheap. It, it's and different. they don't understand why. So like with Disney Springs has a very intricate backstory and it's a, a, kind of a beautiful story. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But if you don't know the story, it's fine. It's just like, oh, these are industrial looking buildings. Right. It's around theming. The lake. Yeah, it's just theming. You, Good theming. You don't, yeah, you don't need the story to enjoy. To, yeah, to have you not being like, what is going on here? Right. But there, you're kind of like, why does it look like I'm in a parking lot? Why is right. a museum the next to... distracts from yes, the Yes, it's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, but yeah, so who knows, you know, who knows how much longer that will be the case. Um, but yeah, the the, Dy- the Dinoland USA case it, it is interesting. And that that is home to one of my least favorite things at Animal Kingdom. Oh, okay, let's hear this. Triceratops spin. Okay, so... Uh, you should you should go ahead and elaborate on Dumbo, the dinosaur version. But um, all I put down was the whole dinosaur carnival area. <laughs> <laughs> the chest, the dino rama. Because really, what I'd like you to don't say, like that big dinosaur. What do you mean? The one that's holding up the sign or whatever, or like it's a really big brontosaur. It's got a really long neck. Oh. It's blue. Oh, it's cute. Yes, yes. Okay, that's not what I mean. I oh. But I, I mean, like, the games and stuff like that oh. that you have to pay for. Um, yeah, I would have but, lumped Primeval World into that. I was just about to say, really, really, the thing I hate the most is Primeval World, which was was a kind of roller coaster. Did they call it a roller coaster? Yeah. That was, like, it made you Wild feel like you were about to fall, yeah, fall off the side. I I love Disney roller coasters. I hated it. Yeah. Um, it was definitely the clunky. Clunky, yes. And yes. I don't, the, the trying to make you feel like you're about to fall off by doing a, by doing just hairpin turn, hairpin turn, hairpin turn. No, I, that's not fun. It, it, yeah, it is a little. <laughs> but I know some people liked it. I think this is kind of in the same vein as that, though. It's just a spinner. Triceratops spin. All it is is Dumbo. It's Dumbo, but, but with, it's a Triceratops. But with Triceratops. And, like, that's fine. At least I can, with that, I can go, oh, I bet, like, three and four-year-olds love that. It's a utility. It's like, well, yes, there have to be rides for the children. I just would prefer there to be some imagination involved. Yeah, yeah. Redoing Dumbo three different times in... Magic Carpets. Yeah, Dumbo. Dumbo. And then Triceratops spin. And Astro Orbiters. But oh, at least Astro Orbiters is cool. Yeah, okay. No. Okay. Sure. These ain't nah. Well, at least it's a. At least you get a really good view of Tomorrowland. Yeah, sure. On the Triceratops, there's you. It's really just Dumbo. You get to see where Primeval World used to be. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow! Oh. Wow! What a thrill! Yeah, yeah. Boring. Yeah, I I like the gift shop and the aesthetic of that area. So I'm not talking about like the. I just I those the carnival games. Yeah. Too. Am I really? I just spent so much money. You think I'm gonna? And five dollars to that does feel a little like girl that should be included i know yeah i paid to be here so much you know <laughs> so much do you have anything from dino land that makes your top oh yeah well dinosaur makes my top oh me too <laughs> let's go get that dino yeah why do you like dinosaur so much um i like that it's more of a thrill ride me too i loved dinosaurs in general when i was a kid so i i don't know as like younger people it appeals more to us you know yeah. what I mean? It appeals to people who want like a a cool, like thrilling dark ride type experience. Like yeah. it really it 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 offers something to a generation that is not always the target of um, Disney World. Like in the nineties, there is a big push to add thrilling attractions to Disney, mm-hmm. but for a long time, it was really mostly like family. Right. Family style stuff. Right. So I am still delighted to have like the more exhilarating type stuff in Disney World. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate that there's something in Animal Kingdom. I know it's a little jostly of a ride, but I mean I like I like the intensity of it. Me too. I think that it's very immersive when it's all working, which recently there have been pieces that aren't working. You really also do feel like you're stepping into this like 
campy, wacky thrill movie from the 90s. Yeah. You know, from the pre-show to the narration to the music, yeah. it all lands you perfectly in that time period where, like, the Jurassic Park craze was happening. Right. But it was also, like, there were all these wacky adventure movies coming out. Yeah. And it, it puts you in one. In a right. really convincing way. So yes, it is nineties. And this is it does feel nineties. But this is also not a low budget ride. No. You know what I mean? This is like a fully yes. they went all out. It's a yeah, it's a dis it's a dark ride. Yeah. It's like one of the good Disney dark rides. It's got a ton of animatronics. Yeah. A lot of dinosaur animatronics, although some of them don't work anymore, but hopefully they'll fix that. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, they it's definitely an impressive did you know that that thing, that, um, what do you call the one with the wings? Uh, the pterodactyl? Pterodactyl. So there's a pterodactyl in the ones. ride. Yeah, okay. there's a pterodactyl in the ride, and now it's just a static figure. It just stays there. I did you know it, used, it always did that. It used to swoop. Are you sure? There's video of it on the internet. Isn't oh, that wild? There's the proof then, because I... That, but it didn't last for long. Yeah, okay. The, and, and maybe I went like on the it Yeti. when it did that. You know what I mean? I just... Oh, yeah. You wouldn't even know. I, I, right. It's... Yeah. Because also, you're it's, going so fast and so dark in there, who knows that you'd even remember, right. you know? It's such a minor detail. I think what they do with the lighting and the sound, as cheesy as it seems, have a static figure that you just light up when you're going under it and it seems like it's coming toward you, it does really it does have a little something. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It does a little something. It'd be cool if they could, like, push it out a little bit as if it were, like, coming toward you. That would add a lot for a little, you know what I uh -huh. mean? Like one hydraulic effect. Right. Pretty easy. But yeah, usually when things break, they kind of just put a band aid on it. So Sometimes. like yeah. For like yeah, for for budget reasons. So like the Yeti is like well, a that huge band aid. Budget reason though. I mean they, they really They'd have to rebuild Expedition yeah. Everest okay, to so do it. It is a budget reason, <laughs> but it's like a very justified budget. Oh, reason. oh you're very, not like, you're right. Not like with the pterodactyl where they didn't fix it. it I don't know how much it costs to fix a swooping pterodactyl, but it's not the Can cost of... Can you give of... me a quote on that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the cost of, like, taking down all of Expedition no. Everest and starting over. Although, I, I um, maybe it was a safety reason. Like, we don't even really know. Like, maybe know. maybe it didn't clear, you know, some test or something. You never know. Yeah. But, you know, it's rare that that happens after the opening of a Disney reason, but they close things for safety reasons sometimes. Or they, yeah. they take things out for True. safety reasons. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, is there anything, what, what else do you have on your least fave? Um, so, I, one of the ones on my least favorite list I haven't actually seen. So, oh. here we go. I, birds make me nervous. Oh, the birds. So, I haven't actually seen the, the bird show in Animal Kingdom, but it makes my least list because I'm not going to go to it. I also don't think that it's an interesting enough Thing for a Disney park. Yeah. Feels a little bush gardens or, or zoo. Okay. I like animal shows in general, and I still find this to be the least interesting thing I you like could do at Animal shows Kingdom. I too. I don't, I, but birds make me nervous. I don't think they're predictable enough to... <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of birds. They make me a little nervous to start with. <laughs> so, like, that on top of the fact that they ruined the show. Like it had it, it had a terrible script when it was the up show. Before that it was fine, but still a 30 minute show about birds. Like, you know, I could only take so much. So when they do further damage to it, I just I know they've changed it again since it's been up. Now it's friends feathered friends in flight, which is fine. But I like, really thought them changing it to up was what was gonna make it like Disney magic, mm. wonderful, but... Tori and I walked out of that show. Oh, my God. Like, halfway through, we were like, we can't do it anymore. Not only are the birds terrifying, but, like, also, the script has just gotten so... Oh, I, you know, it's What's really... What's the script like? It's really... It's... It's, um... It's... Because I'm not going to go see it. <laughs> it's not... It's, like, jokes that you hear at the cruise ship talent show. Okay. You know, yeah, right. it's like, it's like five-year-olds writing jokes that you've, everyone's heard a million times uh -huh, and delivering okay. them like they're brand new. Got it. They turned that into a show and they called it up <laughs> a great bird adventure. I, 
the plot of it barely exists. It just feels, it's so, my bar for theme park entertainment is fairly low. I will be entertained by a lot. It is just surprising to me that Disney would put something on a stage that is clearly not ready for audience consumption. Yeah, I just feel like if you're going, if it's a Disney show, it should be extra. Yeah, and there is nothing, it doesn't even, it barely gets to that, like, Bush Garden Sea World level of being, like, a cheesy animal show. Right. Let alone Disney magic on top yeah, of Yeah, I it. would much rather watch, like, a, a sh- otter show or something like that oh, if they're going to do, you know what I mean? That's cute. Yeah, right, because at least you've got the cute element, <gasps> not I'm scared I'm going to get pooped I just on. had a great idea in Animal Kingdom. They need to, if they ever expand again, which won't be for a while because we just got Pandora, they should do just they should do an Antarctic section. Oh, yeah. How cool would that be to like walk it or like Alaska, do Alaska, and then you can have the Aurora Borealis, the Aurora Borealis be the nighttime. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They should they should do that. That and they they could do a roller coaster through the ice caps or something. Like, but they wouldn't because now I, we haven't gotten anything that's not IP in a while. I know they should, though. Imagine how. And what I mean by that, if you're not familiar with the term, mm. is a, something that is from one of their movies. They'll come out with some penguin movie or something. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, We're, I'm surprised it's there's a, not one. It's a waiting game. Yeah, yeah, there's no Antarctic or Alaska or anything set. No. Disney movie. Oh, Frozen. Well. But that's, I mean, that's. Sure. Norway, but they've got fjords and stuff, so maybe they don't want to get that close again. Yeah. Where's Brother Bear? The, isn't that like the forest? Yes, but... I don't know. It's the Northwest, for sure. <laughs> oh, You're right. Oh. And I, I was like, that could be Alaska, but it could be Canada. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't know. I haven't seen Brother Bear in a really long I time. I know, I know. You guys watching Brother Bear up? <laughs> what do you guys think about Brother Bear? Alright, um, so I'm going to move on. Um, if that's okay. Absolutely. All right. I've got a, I've got a best. Okay. I've got a best. Or do you want me to do a worse? I'll do, no, I can do a worse. No. We, how many, how many of each do you have left? I have four of each. Oh man. Oh no. I have three be- worst and four best. So. Four best. Okay. Yeah. Do a best. Okay. Um, hey, um, <laughs> you know, it's great. Flight of Passage. Oh yeah. It's good. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised you didn't go from a show to a show. But but yes, Flight of Passage oh, is... We were talking about a show? The bird show. Oh, not a good one. Not a good... Should we go to a bird show? Should we go to a show? No, you already went there. What flight I, of Passage. Oh, Flight of Passage. Flight we're of passage. going from one flight to another. There you go. See? see. Flight of Passage... Was that good for is, you guys? Did you like that <laughs> transition? <laughs> flight of Passage is... Possibly my favorite ride in Animal Kingdom. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't take the crown from Dinosaur for me, but that's because I'm a crazy person. You know what I mean? Like, I love Dinosaur with all of my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but logically, it's probably the best. You know, it is deeply immersive. It has a it has a very simple but very compelling story. Uh-huh. Um, it it is like beautifully the film is beautifully rendered yes and for the record we're not fans of the movie but uh but the ride is <laughs> oh are you a fan of the movie now no i was doing an impression of that guy oh the guy <laughs> in the linking <laughs> chamber yeah but anyway the, the... worst pre-show in walt disney world <laughs> yeah definitively mm-hmm. not a question Anyway, the uh, you don't have to be. A, all I'm saying is you don't have to be a super fan of the movie to enjoy the ride or the land. The land it's is a gorgeous. Beautiful land. The land is gorgeous. It, you've got to see it at night if you haven't seen it at night already. Yes, the lights, the plants, and the lights. It's really beautiful. And Although also, be careful walking around there because it's dark. You could kick a kid. <laughs> you could. I yeah, I haven't, but That's I one way to say it. Yeah. But I sometimes think, oh god, if like a little child ran in front of me right now, would I even see them? I know. Yeah. Like, that makes me a little nervous. Mm-hmm. I wish they would like light. Ooh. Well, they kind of do. I was gonna. I was gonna say they should light the floor. They as do. In, but yeah. They have like they have bioluminescent. Yeah, but it's not bright. It's like just a little bit of light. Yeah. So like they should like cast a little purple light onto the floor or something. You know what I mean? Just to make it a little safer. But in terms of it must sorry, be doing right. That was a tangent. The the <laughs> Pandora <laughs> itself is actually jaw droppingly beautiful, breathtaking. The, and the, the ride... water in there. Ugh. Yeah. The waterfalls, like it just takes my breath away. In the ride or in the land? Both. Both. Yeah. The um I was talking about the land. Okay. The ride the ride is also pretty. Yeah. 
they both are, but the ride, I think also the scenes are absolutely breathtaking, mm-hmm. like all inspiring. The first time I rode this, I was, I was on the far end and I kept not looking at the screen. I kept looking at the edge of the screen. And Shame it, on you. It, I couldn't help it. I know. Um, it I took know. me right out of it. Like, I couldn't enjoy it. So it really was disappointing for me. That's a really sad first experience. Don't do that. <laughs> Years later, I went back with Morgan and did it. Mm-hmm. Was I with you or was I with you? I think so. I think so. And it was, I was like, wow, that was beautiful. Yeah. Because I was in a good seat. I never looked at the edge, focused on what I was doing. Um, that ride is a tougher one for big people. It's got a very restrictive... Um, what do you call that? Like restraint system. Like something goes on your. You have to lean forward like you're riding a motorcycle. Um, a restraint comes up on your lower back from behind you, mm-hmm. and your calves. Your calves are like locked in place. So it's kind of. There's just something behind you. I really think you could wiggle out, but you shouldn't. I'm not saying. I'm just. I'm only saying that because um, some people have fear of that kind of restraint, where they feel like. They, if they can't get out, they don't want to go on it. Mm. And so last time I was on it, I was trying to figure out for one of those people um, if I thought I could feel like I could wiggle out of it. What? Because I, the, could you? I think so, yes. But... That know. scares me. Well, you're... <laughs> oh, God. I'm joking. Can't win. <laughs> uh, that fear, I don't think I'm going to fall off flight of passage. That fear is if something happens... I have no escape. Like right. I've got no, I need to be able to escape. And I get that. And so I, I have just, to tell you though, I personally don't think that way because if something happens, something I'm not, I can only do what I can do. You know? Sure. I, I trust Disney. I know. I do too. Not, I mean, we're, you, you have to, if you're going to go, right. you know, you like, don't have a choice. There are a lot of uh, smaller theme parks <laughs> that I won't Heck go no. on. Yeah. I won't yeah. go on those. Big roller coasters and stuff, but I would I would go on anything Disney made. Phones have changed everything because now, like we know when theme park stuff goes wrong, like at local theme parks. Yeah, and I unfortunately see a lot of that in my feed because my feed is so theme park heavy. Right. Um. So it's scary now. Right. You know, it was easier to ignore that when before the news was everywhere, mm-hmm. but now that every time some terrible something happens at some local theme park. It's on all of our phones, and it makes you think of it every time you're there. Right. So it takes, it makes me wary of them, you right. know? Right, right. And we're aware of the stuff that's happened at Disney World, but I still... More than anyone, probably. More than anyone. Yeah. But I still really trust them, you know what I mean? Because overall, their track record for safety is impeccable. Impeccable, yes. Um, they, when you think about the volume of human beings that go on these things and how dangerous they are... Mm-hmm. The fact that Disney is so down with safety procedure and so down with safety technology in a way that makes me feel absolutely confident to ride it every single time, it is, like, an incredible feat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But but so for that restraint system, it does make some people uncomfortable, whether you don't like being feeling like you can't get out or whether you're a bigger person. It is not my most comfortable ride. It is like, so if you haven't been on it, it's like you're getting on a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, and then those restraints come up behind you to sort of keep you in place on the motorcycle. Right. Um, what, why, what makes it harder for bigger people? At first of all, it is, um, I've heard this, but I didn't know why. It's because of the restraint system itself. It's one of the harder ones to fit in. If you're a bigger person, like someone who could fit on guardians of the galaxy might cosmic rewind might not fit on flight of passage, which is kind of. Weird. But what? But what do you mean? Because it's just getting on like a bicycle. Do you mean like they'll tell you you can't get on this because the restraint won't yes, accommodate you? I got it. That. Okay. So like the restraint is just it fits fewer people. I got it. Okay. So you know that. And they've got the thing outside of the ride that you would, could sit in before you get in line. That way. Yes. Unfortunately, someone, my fiance, had an experience where he tested that. They told him he was good to go, and then he literally got up to the ride and it barely fit on him and he was like i'm not comfortable doing this so yes that thing is helpful for seeing if you can physically actually fit on it but i guess my advice would be if you're iffy about it and you're worried about not being able to ride the ride for personal reasons processing reasons then you know it might it might be a tough situation i would say maybe that's one you 
um, avoid if you're very nervous about that kind of thing. Um, and when I say avoid, I mean because you're about to wait in a long line to not be able to ride it, potentially, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyway, regardless of that, Flight of Passage, like, for the experience itself, is a really gorgeous, beautiful ride that I like to it, do. And one thing that, that I think is very impressive is that, so you're sitting on what feels like a motorcycle, but it's supposed to be a banshee, right? For So that's, like, one of the dragons from the movie. A thing that I was so impressed with detail-wise is that when you're on it, you can feel the sides of the the where your legs are it's like coming out like the banshee's breathing mm -hmm. and i just what an impressive detail to think of it yeah it definitely adds a next level of immersion yes, yes. yeah it is funny how I, I i actually writing it thought to myself does this actually add that much to the ride but it actually kind of does yeah i just think it's just extra and yeah. it's 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 an over the top feature. It is, and it's not. It's not like you'd miss it if it wasn't there. But the fact that it is is great. It to me, it's kind of like on um, Mission Space at the end of, and this almost never works anymore. But at the end of it, when you have to grab the joystick and you're maneuvering, it used to like the joystick would kind of pull against you mm. to make it feel like you were actually maneuvering. And then so many people were like handling the joystick so aggressively that they don't work anymore. Mm. So it, that's something that was like an extra thing that they did that now it's gone. And I'm like, ah, oh, bummer that it's gone, but it was cool when it was there. Mm -hmm. and this is like that. Like if it wasn't there, fine. It's still a good ride. But um, when it is there, it is just, an extra bit of detail that I appreciate Disney Imagineers for. I think Flight of Passage is um, probably overall the best ride in Animal Kingdom. It, I could go on it, especially when it was brand new, I could go on it over and over and over again because it's so gorgeous. And the feeling, you just, you get a smile on your face from how beautiful and like the soaring feeling that you're yeah. feeling. More so than Soarin. Right. Um, which is really what it's based off. The predecessor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say this one is must-do magic. It is wild. Oh, yeah. It is wild, though, that right next to it is um, something on my bottom list. Yeah. I, I would say my only complaint about it right now, other than, of course, if it's not good for everybody, but me personally, my complaint about it is recently, um, it seems like the misters that missed you when you're going over water and stuff mm -hmm. like that, on some of the banshees or whatever, they'll get, like, really heavy 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 mist, oh. like sprayed in the face to where you can't even see because your glasses are wet and then some of them have it not at all like they've got they need to do some huh. like tune up on their misting you know how that happens yeah. after a while they, they put these misters in a few different rides around it, walt disney world mm -hmm. where it's supposed and to, shows yes where it's supposed to be yes and shows uh immersive like mm -hmm. oh i'm really getting a little wet here and then after a certain amount of years they're either spraying way too much or not at all it's like that at um, muppet vision 3d and it's like that at philhar magic yep anyway it seems like it's bound to happen when you put those in i mean i feel like if if they know that they can do maintenance I just say yeah they should do <laughs> that's my only so. complaint other than that i would go on it seriously all day because it's so beautiful of a yeah your lightning lane Yes. Unfortunately, that's how it goes now. That if you want Although to ride that's it a good and you don't want to spend... listen to our cue. Right. But uh, if you don't want to spend three hours waiting in line for something, then Lightning Lane. So, and it's right next to one of the ones that's on your your list of bottom. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You're this. good. Luckily, this one um, usually isn't a three-hour wait. It's just for me, it's, it's not a good enough payoff for the it, wait it's, time. Yeah, it's generally a long wait, though. It, yeah, it's, it's it's yeah, it's just not three hours, but it's long. It's you can be in there for two hours. Mm -hmm. It's um yeah, Cali um uh, not Cali River Rapids, mm -hmm. ha, um Navi River Journey is different river. different river, different planet is um it's a slow moving boat ride, scenic tour of a river where there's it, a shaman. Yes, and that's the whole ride. Yeah, 
it's really just supposed to be a journey into Pandora. We've talked about this before. If you ride this first and then you ride Flight of Passage, it's perfect. You're fine. I didn't do that, so I look at this ride like it's nothing. I think that in some ways it's like it's like the kid version of what we get on Pan on uh, Flight of Passage. A little bit, yeah. Although kids can really go on on. I mean, I guess it depends on the age, but. I put my newborn on Flight of Passage. He fell right out the chair. <laughs> yeah, don't Look do what that. you did. Yeah, you, that's you, my fault. He my heard bad. you say you can wiggle out. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but so this also is a just a journey through water. Yeah, water. <laughs> um, a journey through Pandora, mm. showing you the beauty and the animals and stuff like that. Mm. Kind of like you get on Flight of Passage, except for this is through water and it's slow moving. There's no plot at all. If you want to make it more fun, you there's not a story at all, right? No, okay. just drifting down the river. <laughs> um, if you want to make this more fun, you tell your significant other who's never ridden it before that um, there's, there's a, a drop. huge drop at the end. Huge drop. You're Shock so mean. Shockingly big drop. It's it's pretty great. Um, I, I mean, as long as people you... tell other people lies about rides that are about to go on every time I go to Disney, it's yeah, crazy. Oh, this is do... like a favorite pastime. Yeah, <laughs> have you heard "Living with the Land" goes upside down? Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. And also the name of this episode. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. You're right. You post them. Oh, yeah. All right. Um. Hey, what's what else? What else is on your best list? Oh, um, well, I have a few, I have a few shows on my best list. Do you have a few shows? It's showtime. <laughs> I think so. I think that, I think that you and I have the same shows because they're the only two that are left. You like the bird one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you like that I up like, one? I like when they preview the new Avatar water movie oh. on the tree before the Christmas show. Why does that show look so bad? I don't know. It's funny because, like, Way of Water, everything I've seen. I mean, you saw it, right? I did. Gorgeous. Don't make me is talk it, about it on the podcast. Is it gorgeous and beautiful, though? It is gorgeous So it's really surprising we'll that the that. show on the tree is not gorgeous and beautiful. Yeah. So Jake it looks like and a I video went game. to watch the Christmas show on the tree that they project like a Christmas animals doing christmas stuff. i don't know and uh we were like jazzed for christmas we were we were super excited and then we were sidelined or whatever <laughs> because we're we're accidentally watching what <laughs> seems to be a preview for the way of water yeah it was really out of nowhere it wasn't it's uh, not what we were expecting it, the showtime was like six o'clock the this was like at six o'clock. The showtime for the Christmas thing was six o'clock. So it was six o'clock and all the lights we went down. Waiting. And then Avatar came on. So we're <laughs> You're like, like, no, there's no happening? way. Yeah, it was really um, surprising. And then it also like looked weird. It just looked like that it thing. It wasn't very high quality. It, well, it just looked like that thing where it's like, the, you know how in video games, how they'll have cut scenes, those really long like scenes that are supposed to be like a movie, but they look like a video I don't, game. But I believe you. That's what this felt like. It felt like a video game. It didn't feel. It didn't feel like it was made for what we were looking at at all. It probably wasn't. It was really weird. Yeah. It was a surprising experience. Then after this Avatar kind of commercial thing, then they like it stopped, and the Christmas thing didn't start right away. It was yeah. like a couple minutes till that started, and we were like, we just got bamboozled. Yeah, we truly really got like <laughs> sabotaged. <laughs> With like Avatar, yeah, yeah. How, you, just you went to go see up. it though, so it worked. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I went it to worked. see it for our fans. Wow, because I am such a Disney. Wow, I actually went to see it. Because... Well, if you saw it for our fans, what's your review? <laughs> <laughs> I would give a review if I had a good review, but I don't. But that's well, that's not how reviews work. Listen, <laughs> you can't just say I'm not going to give my review because it's I not thought, good. I thought wind up liking it because i like pandora the land so much yeah what a weird way to go you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah i i didn't like the first avatar Me i know neither. most people first did. of all too long uh, yeah so long it just isn't my kind of movie me neither um and space pocahontas is what pandora the land came out and i was skeptical mm -hmm. but because who, who cares but i trust disney uh-huh so 
we went to the land. Now I love the land. Now I love the ride. I love living with the land. Okay, I knew. <laughs> I was thinking in my head. I was like, I should say not living with the land. I love Pandora the land. I love Flight of Passage the ride. So I was like, I'm going to go see this movie. Uh-huh. It just, it wasn't for me. I, it was it's too war. much like the first movie. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It, it's a war, like a war movie, really, when it boils down to it. And that, a lot of people love that kind of thing. And I'm just not one of those people. Let us know if you liked um, The I, Way of most Water. Most people liked it that I've heard, oh. right? It, didn't you say everybody you talked to you likes it? I did say that. But I have, I would never, I don't think I would ever put myself But you're not even going to go see it. Seeing that movie. So, <laughs> okay. like, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, Navi river is that what we're talking about still no we're talking about shows we're talking yeah, about shows. why are we talking oh wow. oh because i said it's because of like you that is my fault because of you <laughs> oh my god hey um what show do you like i like the nemo show i like the nemo show a lot yeah in I, the big blue world. i love that song that's a great song i was shocked when he told me it wasn't in the movie because i thought surely it's in the end credits or something did we talk about this last episode of this Probably. podcast yeah that that song is fabulous it feels like it is so good it makes you wonder why it's not in the movie yeah kristen anderson lopez and bobby lopez creators of frozen yeah it does feel like you said this in a lot but maybe not their first like... job with disney was writing the music for this show mm -hmm. and it shows that they're fantastic songwriters yeah because uh, big beautiful world go with the flow just keep swimming all those great songs yeah. you're like these weren't in the movie like it like it makes you wonder why finding nemo wasn't a musical to begin with right it's so good yeah. it's that good you know right. yeah so so it's a really good show i i really love the um theater the, oh, the, the, act, the building in the itself. Wild, it's still yeah. called that, right? It used, it to, used be to be Tarzan. Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan. Tarzan rocks. That's probably one of the more interesting shows that have existed in Disney World. Like a Tarzan rock concert was, yeah. was the theme. You know what I mean? It was cool because it was a rock concert, but it was like... Um, so it showcased the Phil Collins soundtrack of Tarzan, but it also had Tarzan like swinging from vines. There were stunts in addition to like the singing. He was singing and swinging. So like you know, it was it was quite the spectacle. Yeah. It unfortunately uh, there were some cast member incidents. Multiple. Well, two that I that I know okay, of. Okay. Where Tarzan fell off the rope. It's so crazy. Yeah, not good. How often do you think that happens in like regular Broadway shows almost, or regular Cirque du Soleil shows? Almost never. They're fined really? huge amounts of money when it happens. Really? Disney is fined huge amounts of money when it happens. Okay. See, I thought maybe it's just something that happened every once in a while and you just don't hear about it. Nope. But this you did because it's Disney. Well, it's also because these are union actors who are now right. in the hospital a lot of times. Not that time though, right? I don't I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I the the person was alive. And, and that's posted on social media that they were recovering. So they probably had so to go to the think? hospital. Okay. If you fall from a height onto a stage sure. at Disney World, you're going to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. They don't ever, you know, just let you <laughs> walk home or whatever. Which is good. Which is good. So, you know, that is what it is. But um, yeah, there's huge fines involved with this stuff. Disney's probably one of their biggest entertainment fines was from a repeated um, series of injuries that happened on at the Indiana Jones stunt show. Really? Where they were cast members seriously injured during... One time, there's, there is a scene in the show where um, an, a stunt actor goes up a prop ladder. The ladder collapsed. They wow. fell. So they got really hurt. The stunt guy who has the sword. It's almost ironic. He's dressed it's up, like yeah. a stunt show. He's dressed up as a bad guy. He's, you know, waving swords around. During one of them, something was wet or something wasn't placed right or something. There was a major injury with that. So, yeah, there there was a cast member death on that show. No. Yeah. So, there, there there's... Oh, my gosh. I had no idea. There's... I can't believe it's still running. There are... Well, they shut down shows the next day and then did an investigation and then reopened the show. So there's there's huge ramifications. Were, so were they not faulted for that one? I don't want to say because I don't I don't have it right in front of me, okay. and it's a pretty serious liability Maybe type we of situation. Do a once we research it more. Yeah. So we're not 
we're, the, we're follow us this, on Neverland Nap. No. We we we're not saying Disney is responsible yeah. and liable for these things for legal no, purposes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the this stuff did happen. So it is there when it comes to the show and when it comes to incidents. There's huge ramifications for safety stuff. So Tarzan rocks when it had you know a couple safety issues. It was like pretty immediately widespread that it was probably not going to last very long. No, I, It's impossible to know because Disney never reveals right. if that's the reason they closed the show or they cited popularity or, you know, any of the reasons the show could close. But it gave birth when it closed to Finding Nemo the Musical. Right. And Bobby and Jennifer Lopez, no, nope, Bobby and Kristen Anderson Lopez started writing music for Disney and that led us to Frozen. So really, without Tarzan Rocks, there would be no Frozen <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a big blue world. It is. It, but, yeah, it's a great show. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Sorry, we went, we went very off track there. But there's interesting stuff going on at the oh, Animal yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that that show, along with the other show that we'll get to in a second, is a really good um, escape from the heat. Yes, yes, yes. So even if you're not really in shows like mm -hmm. you still might appreciate that. we have to see the new version of the show but i'm looking forward to it yeah me too i all they did was shave some time off right yeah okay well, no they i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> bless you well things got wild this episode i sneezed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that thank you thank you thank you um yeah no they shaved some time off and they updated the set different set I think they changed some of the script. They made it shorter. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting. We'll have to check it out. Absolutely. All right. What do you have on a list? <sighs> I'm not sneezing. I'm so sorry. Bless okay. You. What's on your least favorite list? I have my number one least favorite. What else? Do you have more than one? Um, have we talked about Triceratops Spin? I don't know. No! Because we had our little audio <laughs> incident earlier, I don't remember if we talked about it this time. Trice, okay, well, just in case we haven't, Triceratops Spin has no imagination. It's, <laughs> it's very Dumbo. boring. It's just I don't Dumbo think with we've dinosaurs. Talked about it. I think we talked about it before. That's mine, but that's incident. all I have to say. Just super quick. I wish you were a more imaginative ride for children. Yes, yes. And and that that is true. And so what I had about that part was the the like carnival games over there that you have to pay for because it irritates me yeah the and, dino uh, land yeah. section was that this episode no no oh that's so it's like lost media like when they lose movies from the 20s yeah you know it's yeah. gone forever hey you know what else is on my list what cali river rapids yeah, i had that on my list and then i was like i don't know if i don't think it's a bad ride it's not it's actually a really good storyline <laughs> Okay. But the reason it's on my list is because I'm never going to ride it. Because you don't like getting wet? Because I don't like getting wet. Yeah. I do recommend experiencing Kelly River Rapids at some point um, if you're okay with getting wet. Be smart about it. Take a poncho or Take a plan for this to be your, the last thing you do. Although I wouldn't suggest this be the last thing you do because I think that a big mistake that people make is that they don't go to Animal Kingdom at night. I think people think this is a half-day park, so they'll go in the morning. To like rope drop. But guess um, what? That's a great thing because now we get reduced crowds at night. I know it's good for us, but it's not good for the people missing Animal Kingdom at night. Animal Kingdom at night is gorgeous. Yeah. So our listeners be the smart end yeah. of that equation and go to Animal Kingdom at night because not only is the sunset in Animal Kingdom the most beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing. I'm not joking. It is so pretty. Like all the trees, all the animals. It makes sense. Yeah. Like the sunset there is so gorgeous. But then on top of that, Animal Kingdom comes alive again at nighttime. Right, right. Projections on the tree. Yeah, I'm not just talking about Pandora, which has the Pandora. bioluminescence at night. <clears throat> I'm also talking about, like, Everest at night. Everest is, is so pretty at night. Yes, and that whole area with the string lights. I've never ridden it at night. Should we ride yes, it at night? Yes, it's great <gasps> at night. We should ride it at night. Well, let's do it, because half of the ride is outside. Yeah. and then not it, more. And then it makes the dark parts really. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I highly recommend Animal Kingdom at night. So. Expedition Everest is obviously on our tops. It's, yes, it's, that would be, like, 
going back and forth for me as my number one because with what flight of passage yes. mm, yeah because it's totally different but expedition everest was my favorite roller coaster in the entire world for a long time mm -hmm. up until guardians was built wow cosmic rewind um so up do, until this year it's been my favorite roller coaster since it opened do you know how you feel about um mickey and minnie's runaway railway you can't deal with your resentment toward it for replacing the great movie ride. Yeah. I feel a little bit of that for Expedition Everest because I'm so mad about the Yeti. Okay. I can't not because the that's Yeti that's not your Yeti that you grew up with your whole but life. The Yeti, it's more of a conceptual thing. You're right. Well, I was a kid. Like I, I rode Expedition Everest the year it opened. So like So did you go on it with the Yeti? I don't remember because I was young. Well, that's what I'm saying. But like what I'm saying is but I've had that like I have the marketing in my brain. Sure, sure, sure. I have I the it. commercial. I have the special, the behind-the-scenes special in my brain. And I remember Disney saying that this was the next step in themed entertainment because of how impressive and huge this animatronic was. No one had ever seen anything like it. Yeah. It was first of its kind and groundbreaking. So groundbreaking that it broke the ground, and they literally had to, like, turn it off. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a huge loss. Yes, it's for a me, huge loss. like creatively, innovation wise. This, this, imagine Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind with a huge animatronic in one of its scenes of that guy. What's who's the guy? The Celestial. Imagine a huge Celestial animatronic. That could have been where we are, but it's not because the Yeti broke. Do you know what I mean? It, it shut the door. In I don't some know. Ways. I kind of think that, that the screens thing, which is mostly what Guardians mm. of the Galaxy is was coming because it's cheaper. Ugh. And even though I love Guardians of the Heartbreak. Galaxy and it's my favorite roller coaster in the entire world, it relies heavily on screens and it probably is maybe lower budget than some of the old. That's one of the only reasons that for me it is a really Guardians is a really close um like Rise of the Resistance in my mind. It, it incorporates screens, but it also relies so heavily on physical sets, practical right. effects, animatronics, the things that make classic Disney rides yeah. staple signature entertainment. Mm -hmm. I feel like it utilizes them all in a really modern, new, interesting way um, that I just wish Guardians had just a touch more of a dash of. Yeah, I think all they could have done was a touch of it because on a roller coaster, you're going so fast and moving so far. There's pointless to like put animatronics. That's another reason the Yeti was so impressive was because like they had this wildly huge like mind blowing animatronic, but they incorporated it into the story in a way where you could really get a sense for its like swinging motion and its articulation and all of its joints. And it was like, how do you make that work? It seems so complex, and obviously, it was. It was so Too complex. Yeah, but like. Okay, but even without its signature piece, what Expedition Everest does so well is immersive, culturally authentic storytelling. Absolutely. Can't beat it. No, you can't beat it. It is probably the example of, like, how to tell a interesting, immersive, transportive story. Right. And, and on top of that, it's got all of the elements that I like in a roller coaster. I like the big drop. Yeah. I like the backwards... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I like the story. I like the kind of slower part of the beginning and then mm -hmm. the fast, high-paced turns. The, the, the layout of the track is awesome. Yeah. It's, it makes for a really good ride. Yes. Yeah. I, and it doesn't, like, bang my head around. I like that it's just a lap bar. Yeah. It, does, it also just feels like you're just hopping in a train and going for an adventure. Right. It also doesn't feel 30 seconds like Rock and Roller Coaster. No. It, I know a lot of people's favorite roller coaster is Rock and Roller Coaster. But for me, it's too, it's over too quickly. And the combination of the jostling and the over-the-shoulder restraint, mm -hmm. which makes the jostling kind of bang your head around, mm -hmm. especially if you're shorter, um, makes for me, that one not... It's That's just good. about the music for me. If Expedition yeah. Everest had Aerosmith on it, it'd be my favorite roller coaster. Oh, you've got AirPods. I'm going to lose them. Uh, <laughs> I need to get one of those things that like keeps them together. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. Hey. But yeah, that's my favorite. Okay. You have one more favorite. 
Have we talked about dinosaur? I see. I don't know. <laughs> We really messed this one up by having an audio problem before <laughs> you we got guys, here. You okay, guys. let's talk about dinosaur and and go back and talk about the Chester and Hester thing just for a minute, and then you just cut it if we you find out we talked about it thirty minutes. I'm not ago. gonna do that. I'm still staying in dinosaur. We're gonna talk about the same thing twice. D- listeners, don't you love? Okay, dinosaur? yeah, I really don't think we've already talked about it on the actual podcast. So this I think- is like a special episode. You guys are getting to see like, and this is our first really big like. Boo boo. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go get that dino. All right. Dinosaur um, has all of the um, whimsy of one of those like quirky adventure movies from the 90s. I just can't remember. Yes, it does. It, I love that it is a. I just now I'm like, did we talk about it? Maybe we talked about it. Are we just going crazy? We we're definitely going. We're crazy. well past that. Okay, dinosaur is thrilling in like it's like a thrill ride, but not a roller coaster. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I love that. It's, it's got it's a the great only one, ride vehicle. Yeah, it kind of is. Is there another thing that like is like a dark ride that's like? I a... mean, in Disneyland, Indiana Jones is like the what? exact same thing. Oh, but... Roger Rabbit is kind of like that. Is Roger Rabbit thrilling? You've been on it. I haven't. No, it's not thrilling no, at all. No, I oh, don't, I don't know. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I, Mickey I think Roger and Minnie. Rabbit, okay, what? that's trackless though, so it's not the same. That's not thrilling. What? <laughs> I think I think it's good. Oh, well, then maybe you would think Roger Rabbit is thrilling. I was just about to say, Roger Rabbit is thrilling if you think Snow White's Scary Adventure is thrilling. Oh. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, you're about, right. Though. Really, Mickey and Minnie is just not thrilling. thrilling I'm either. not just talking about the fact that the dinosaur is scary. I mean, also, like, you're going right and then left and then right and then oh, left. Oh, like, yeah. You're going kind of like down, it's like but a not chase. really down. Yeah. Like, you're moving fast, you're mm-hmm. going on turns. Like, it's thrilling in, in a kind of speed way. It whips your hair yeah. around. The Rise of the Resistance does that a little. But it's also trackless, so it's not the same. And I dinosaur, don't think Rise of the Resistance does that. Not to me, but... Dinosaur Goat makes such sharp turns. It, like, it like it almost scoots feels, you around your seat a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I think it almost feels like a roller coaster. In it the kind of does. I really like it. They've got, like, kind of like a fake drop, you know? Yeah. When you see the pterodactyl, and then at the end. Right. It's kind of like... It's not, you're not really dropping. I don't yeah. Think. Or if you are, it's not much. You're just going faster and your ride car is felt tilted forward. So yeah. it, it feels like you're falling. Okay. Okay. I Do think. you know for sure that's pretty, okay. Well. I, I think so too. It's not like you're, there's no other explanation. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, what could it be? You know? know, you're going down in the basement. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're in, you're in the water table of Florida <laughs> <laughs> because you can't build down here. Right. Yeah. But okay, hold on. So so explain no. the story. Yes. Okay, once upon a time. No, of, of <laughs> the Dinosaur the Cosby Museum <laughs> and the parking lot. Okay. The story that we don't get when we're walking into Dinosaur Dino Land that we should get. Right. So di- the Dino Institute is this like museum and research center. Uh-huh. And hosted and founded by Bill Nye the Science. <laughs> 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 that's not true. That's not true. You uh, just hear his voice. Yeah. Um, you know, that's right. I hosted a round of Bill, Bill. Bill. Um, he, the, he started this museum and they talk about dinosaurs and it's this really like educational, you know, seeming experience. And then to capitalize on the tourist draw that the successful museum had, these two hillbilly proprietors, Chester and Hester, they build. Are this... they dinosaurs? <laughs> no. I don't know. Okay. They're represented <laughs> as dinosaurs on Primeval World. Oh my god, that's so. I think they are. Okay. These two dinosaurs, <laughs> are just hillbilly dinosaurs that from makes Texas. This, that makes this make less sense. So I know, right? Okay. That actually makes this all so let's complicated. Say, let's say no, they're not dinosaurs. Chester and Hester, whoever they are. They bring in, they spring up in the parking lot of, of the Dino museum. Institute. Yeah. They spring up this like traveling, like carnival, carnival type experience with carnival games and a rickety wild mouse roller coaster Dumbo. called Primeval World. <laughs> a Dumbo ripoff. 
<laughs> they just put it all up in the parking lot, and then they yeah. make you pay for the games. They're really extortionists. Really, when you really. think about it, they're it's a tourist trap. It is, and and Primeval World does feel like a carnival roller coaster, does it not? It, it did. Does. It did. It did. R.I.P. <laughs> it's gone extinct. Yes. The rest of Dino Land is soon to follow because. So they we're basically here. said, "We're hey, we're just so you know, we're thinking about putting Moana and Zootopia in here. So get ready, right? You know, yeah. Um, so so I think that that's a very interesting backstory that is from Disney. You didn't make that up, right? <laughs> no, I didn't improv that. Just now. okay, okay. That would be very impressive. Though. Thanks, but no, it's real. Um, you can look it up on the internet." No, I'm good. I trust you. I mean, honestly, that's what you're doing listening to this podcast, isn't it? Instead of doing all those Google searches, you're just listening and now you know, you yeah. know. So, but but Disney doesn't tell you that backstory, so it's just kind of weird. Yeah, when it's, you're when you're experiencing it, you're just wondering why you're in a parking lot. Yeah. You're not like, "Oh wow, look, I'm in the roadside attraction." You're just like, "Why is this part <laughs> on the pavement <laughs> you yeah. know it doesn't make any sense yeah so it doesn't the, the, the idea never to me as a child never translated i actually wondered as an adult it didn't translate i don't I, I literally wondered okay so did they just like build this in the back of animal kingdom like this is just some temporary oh yeah that would make side sense. Set. like as a kid i didn't know i was yeah, like that makes perfect sense is actually. this just it's like like mickey's a bonus birthday land like we just set up some tents back here yeah i felt that way about mickey's birthday land well, too and it was true of mickey's birthday land. and it was tr- kind yeah. of true of this intentionally that they just made it to look like it was right but it know. wasn't supposed to be temporary no it was mickey's it, birthday land was god supposed it's to be temporary. 24 years old Wow. Yeah. All right. So that's that interesting story. You so I have my number one all time most despised. Most despised. <laughs> reviled. Yes. And then you have another number one, right? I do. Okay, great. So let me tell you <gasps> about this isn't just my number one least favorite Animal Kingdom attraction. This is my number one least favorite Walt Disney World attraction or all of Disney. Parts. I don't know. I hate it. I'm just. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? It's the bug's life. It's tough to be a bug. It's tough to be a bug. That's it. It's even tougher to make me sit through this attraction. It's terrible. I won't ride it. If you hate bugs, another reason not to go on it. Like, who, who doesn't? It's just bugs. It's nothing but bugs. <laughs> yeah. They, this is like a 40, 5D, 40D. Yeah. It's got some deeds in there. Uh, yeah, show where they blow stinky smell at you. They make you feel like there are roaches crawling underneath your seat or in your seat. Mm-hmm. It's part of that wave of shock entertainment that Disney had a phase of in the in the in the nineties. I hate it. Yeah, it's really it's right in there with Honey I Shrunk the Audience. I hated that less. It's right. I liked. I guess I kind of liked that in a nostalgic point of view. It's right in there with the figment that we currently have, mm. where it's just supposed to Don't be. Don't think he smells at me. Isn't it so funny to be annoying? Isn't it so funny to stink? Yeah. Is it, like, isn't that hilarious? N- not everybody has the like alien humor encounter. Of a four-year-old boy. Yeah, it really did try to cash in on that moment, and also I think it was cultural because that's when like Tosh point oh and like stuff like that where like viral internet yeah. content that was raunchy there were a bunch of cartoons like that yeah, yeah it right, was really right, popular right. it was just a cultural moment and it's tough to be a bug as but a product of there. it yeah and it is such a waste of space yeah because imagine if they put a fantastic restaurant down there right imagine if they put an immersive this is in projection tree, mapping you guys. this is in this the is, icon of the park this is in the best spot that you could possibly get i think in all of animal kingdom prime real like estate something. prime real estate Absolutely. clearly disney does not value <laughs> so you said real, real estate. estate yeah because if it were me that there would be something show stopping yes under there instead there is something over 20 years old and awful in there right i yeah it never has a line it's at the front of the park it never has a line it's the first thing you see in the park it is the first ride slash attraction you come to i get it's not a ride but more people are riding spaceship earth than they're riding this yeah by far 
by far because this is also not a omnibus. Yeah, it's a garbage show. Right, and it's a beautiful theater. I wish they would do something with it. And I, I personally didn't love the movie Bugs Life, but I bet there was something it's they could have done. They could have done something better if they just felt like they had to do that movie. But do you know they what they should do now? Do they should do Antonio's Room from Encanto. Oh yeah. Oh, wow, that would be very cool. That would be amazing. And it can be... And Encanto's huge. And whether they want to make it a restaurant, a show, a, whatever they want to do, oh. as long as a, a dinner show, yeah. a reservation-only dinner show, wow. They used to have stuff like that. Imagine how incredible. But, like, what a, it could really tie into the message of conservation because Antonio's animal friends can be, you know, helping him learn and appreciate the yeah. natural world. Right. And how it impacts your culture. Right. Amazing. Amazing. Why why? Why why do we have stink bugs in there? It doesn't make any sense. So I it's just a gross I agree with you that this experience. is probably the worst thing that Disney World has on the menu right now. Yeah. Yep. It's a stinker. <laughs> um, but also in my top, my number one. This is your actual number one? Probably. Oh wow. Festival of the Lion King. Festival of the Lion King. It's Festival a good show. of the Lion King. Not my King. number one. If there was, yeah, because you love. I love Everest and I love Flight of Passage. I love shows. I know. They, it's, you know, I am a theater person. Mm-hmm. Grew up a kind of a closet theater person, but now I'm a, an out and proud theater person. Um, worked in theater for a long time. Um, so I love a show. Yeah. And this is probably the best. Yeah, this is a great <sighs> show. Even if you're not as big of a show person is Jake. This is a great, great show. If you're going to see a show at Disney World, I would recommend this one. Mm -hmm. For many reasons, including quality, but also artistry. Because the notion of taking The Lion King and making the show and saying, well, we don't want to retell the plot. Instead, let's take it through the eyes of African storytellers throwing a tribal festival to celebrate the legacy of The Lion King. What? And it's not just one thing. It's not. There's tumbling. There's it's, singing. Morgan says that this show is a little Cirque du Soleil. It is a little Cirque du Soleil. And it is like a little like if Afri- if uh, Cirque du Soleil had a Lion King African themed thing, yes. this would be it. But like the singing in this. It's beautiful. It's like tear inducing for yeah. me. They are so talented. Um, And then... The Tumble Monkeys are such good entertainment. Yeah, the Tumble Monkeys are amazing. That fire guy makes me nervous. I'm not going to talk about him. (laughs) But the birds during the Can You Feel the Love Tonight, that aerial sequence, Mm -hmm. like, stops my heart. Like, it's so... Humans dressed as birds don't make me nervous. (laughs) (laughs) Just just the ones holding fire. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty to make you nervous there. <laughs> but yeah, those those bird people doing that sequence, like, they are so graceful. Yeah. And the singing. The costuming is. That arrangement of Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Yeah. Like, it, like, it just is perfect. Yeah. I would change nothing about that show. Right. Nothing. And the choreography is brilliant, too. Mm-hmm. Costumes. I wanted to be one of the, like, zebras or one of the, you know, when I was a kid. You know yeah. what I mean? Because their costumes are, like, so detailed and awesome you know they're really striking looking um there's also some cool history with the show because the simba um and timon floats in there were from the lion king premiere parade when it debuted in 1996 which was where i want to say that was mgm mgm i think so too because MGM would always have the premiere parades. They would, yeah. They had a Hercules parade. I remember the Toy Story one. They had a Toy Story one, yeah. So those floats I remember the Hercules one. ended up being reprogrammed to be part of the Festival of the Lion King. Yeah. I have a really heartwarming story about that from my childhood, too. When I was a kid and the Festival of the Lion King was in this old building in... Camp Mickey Mickey, which was this weird in between land of Animal Kingdom. What's there now? Pandora. Okay, that's what I thought, and that's where Beastly Kingdom was supposed to be, right? Yes. Okay, go on with your story. So it's actually kind of beautiful that we ended up with banshees instead of dragons. Like, yeah, it it really it really worked out. Yeah, kind of works. Yeah. Um. But anyway, when I was a kid and I was waiting in line for the Festival of the Lion King, it was like this big windy outdoor line. And there was a, a lamp in the grass, and I put my hand on it, and I burned my hand on it when I was a kid. 
heartwarming? Yeah. Wasn't that beautiful? No. <laughs> <laughs> really hurt. I think I was sick. What kind of lamp? A magic lamp? <laughs> no, babe. Like, uh, like in the grass, in the tall grass. It was on the other side of the railing, so I shouldn't have been touching it. Oh, my goodness. But it was this real, it was this, like, it was just, like, a big, flat, standing lamp thing. Uh-huh. And I just was leaning, and I just put my hand on it, and I, like, I don't know if I could actually hear my skin sizzle, but it <laughs> felt, it, yeah. it was that sound when you touch an iron yeah, when yeah. you're a kid, you know what I mean? Sure. That, that sound that can only mean one thing. Why was that light so hot? I don't know. I love festivals. What the nineties? It was the two thousands. Yeah, uh, things things are hot back then. Yeah, Animal yeah. Kingdom's hot all the time anyway. Oh my god, <laughs> that's why you need to go see a show. Yeah, that's why you need to go see Nemo Festival of Lion King. Do yourself a favor. Skip that bird garbage <laughs> for now until they make it better. You know that one's not even inside an air conditioned. I know that one's in like a tent. <laughs> It's just torture. Yeah. There's birds. It's hot. It's like um, pushing you to your limits. It would be pushing me to my limits for sure. That's, that's why, why I, I've never been. That's why I, I got up and left. I, you would think, <laughs> and I, I, I always think, oh, I've got to do everything Disney. I mean, this is my job. Yeah. No, I can't. I just <laughs> <laughs> you won't do the bird one. I don't want to. For your birthday, you we'll guys drag aren't you make me, are you? Oh, I will. <laughs> I 100% will. I'll All say, right. okay, Michael, I've spoken to Disney and I've got Michael's Morgan Sizzle and I've gotten Morgan a front row seat for just her oh, to watch row. the birds. Oh, just no, me. That's worse. That's worse. That's worse because then the birds are close. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. All right. Anything else about Animal Kingdom you want to talk about? No, just that I love the ambiance in general. I just think it's a really beautiful park and I. I don't think it gets enough credit because it's just really pretty. I was born the same year and month Animal Kingdom opened, so I feel spiritually mm-hmm. connected to Animal Kingdom, although yeah. it is the park I visited the least. It is the park you visit. The, the park we visit the least. Probably wish, the park everybody visits the least. I wish there were a boat that would get you into Animal Kingdom. Yeah, the transportation situation is What's its nearest downfall. park? Hollywood? No. Magic? No. You see Hollywood from, from Expedition Everest, so I want to say yes. So, you know what would be fabulous? The boat. A boat. Yeah. A boat that takes you into, like, a port seems very Animal Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this. Not on the podcast, though. But, yes, we, like, that. that's what they need. They need another form of transportation <sighs> because you're the either Animal on a bus Kingdom or you're driving. River gondola or something mm-hmm. would be lovely. You're on a bus or you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Right. Everything else, every other park has something else. Yeah. Skyliner, monorail. Boat, it's really something. far out there. I don't know why. Exactly. Why? Yeah, yeah, it must be because because the animals have to be far away from fireworks. Yeah, you've got to be right. Oh, that wow. that is such an impairment for them. Mm-hmm. They have to figure that out. Build a dome. Am I right? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that would work. <laughs> I'm All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening, or, or if you're on the YouTube version watching. Um, hey, guess what? What? I would love it if you guys would subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review. Pretty please. We would love that so much. If you're listening and you've enjoyed any of the things you've learned, whether it's about Tarzan falling during Tarzan Rocks, whether it's about the history and backstory of Dinoland USA, or whether it's about me burning my hand on a light. Or uh, me being scared of birds. Or more than being terrified of birds. <laughs> um, if you've enjoyed anything you've learned, we'd really appreciate it if you left us a review. We would really like that. Yeah. Also, you can find us online on social media. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Neverland Navco. Uh-huh. We're posting Disney history. We're posting um, dining stuff on there. It's a good time. You should check us out. It is. It, we're doing a lot of like history, fun stuff you may not have known. And yeah. I think that that... It's just... And y'all seem to like that. We appreciate the support. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also visit us online um, at neverlandnavigation.co, our website. Like, it's old school. Um, <laughs> Morgan writes a really good blog there. If you're looking for, like, written form content about the Disney parks, I don't... There's no one I'd rather read in their voice about Disney stuff than Morgan's blog. Aww. So you should check it out. It's good. Um, and then on Etsy, it's Neverland Navigation. There are some fabulous. Hold on, don't move. Oh. <laughs> okay, it was just it was just the headphones. It's okay. fine. Morgan, <laughs> I know I'm too far away from the microphone. Morgan makes really great shirts on there. This is one that she made for me um, today. You can't see it unless you're on the video version. But it says for our audio listeners, it says Pooh's local honey, and it's got this gorgeous like hand-drawn feeling 
um, illustration of a pot of honey with like a honeycomb and um, flowers by it. And it is, um, it is a really beautiful shirt. And all of the shirts on that shop are super soft. So if you're looking for well-designed quality, soft Disney shirts, it's a really good place to go. You should Thanks. get, you should get one. You should get one. Uh, I think that's it. Oh. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. We just have to do that. Very last part. One more. Oh, so from when I said, hold on, don't move, and I knocked the... Uh, okay, hold on. But are you going to cut this on the YouTube version? Yeah. I'm going to have to. Okay. Maybe not. You know what? Hi, YouTube. Things, <laughs> you things happen. And you, get, you get an extra version. So what happened was um, I, I, get, I went to go get the shirt, and I knocked the cord out of the out of the thing and it stopped it the podcast but anyway i'm holding up this shirt that morgan made it says Pooh's local honey like winnie the pooh but it's got these it's got this beautiful like hand-drawn looking illustration of um a honey pot and honeycomb and flowers and it's really beautiful the material is really soft and they're really good quality so you should go get one um neverland navigation on etsy is where you do that thanks yeah yeah they're fun to make yeah um other than that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Yeah. And we'll see you on, on our, our next, next adventure. adventure. Goodbye.